Okay, so now that the meeting is now being recorded, hello and good afternoon everyone. So a little bit of a recap first. So from the previous meeting that we had in the previous pre-recorded video lectures that I have posted, we have already modeled this fictitious structure right here. And we have also assigned its properties. So this is for the section properties. We have also assigned the materials, the specifications, the support conditions, and we have also subjected our models with the loading conditions as follows. So we have already indicated them here in this loading um, part on your right. But confirmation first, everyone, nakikita nyo ba yung mga ating mga loading conditions na nasa right? Yes, po, sir. Okay, so very good. So this afternoon, what we would be doing is that we would be discussing about load combinations, load envelopes, and the analysis proper of STAAD itself. So before defining our load conditions, I mean load combinations, we must first check if our model right here has any um, errors. So, i-check natin kung may error itong model natin. Ano? So, for us to do that, let us introduce the perform analysis command. So, in order for us to do that, we have two ways actually. So, the first way is by clicking here on this, on this part at the top. So, kung nakikita nyo yan, so ito, click yan. And click at the analysis commands, which is located here. So, after clicking that, this interface would come out. So, perform analysis, no print, then click add. So, for you to see it better, so it you would be clicking this one on the top. You would be clicking this at the upper left. And you would be clicking perform analysis, no print, and then add. So, once that you will be doing that, our perform analysis command is already in our softwares. So, I will just be erasing our, um, our screen. So, close. So, that is just one way. So, another way on how we would be um, introducing our perform analysis command is by going straight to the command file or the command editor. So, by clicking here, I will just be saving our program. So, this is basically our command editor. So, I would be scrolling them down. And I would just type perform analysis right here. But it is already here since I have added it using the way that I have shown you a while ago. But for pretend that this is non-existent, so for example, walang perform analysis done, just type perform analysis right here. And after that, just close this command editor, then click yes. Okay, so your perform analysis command basically does what it says, which is perform analysis. So using this command, the program will analyze your model if it has any error, and it will also generate the reactions, the internal stresses of the members, the displacement, and whatsoever. So let's do that. So once that your perform analysis is already in your system or it is already in your program, just click here at the upper part, so analysis and design, then run analysis. So once that you will be clicking this, this interface would come out. And as you can see right here, guys, my, I mean, our model has 24 errors. So it is to be this one. So wait. So I have 24 errors right here. Teka, ayaw gumana. Okay, so we have 24 errors. So what I would be doing is that I would be opening the output file for me to check what are those errors. So I will be clicking done. And this interface would come out, which is the um, editor view. So at the lower portion of your screen, these are to be the errors that I have in my models. But confirmation first, everyone, nakikita ba yung mga ating errors? Can you see the errors at the lower part of your screens? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So for you to check what are those errors, just simply double-click them. So it would be double-clicking this. So as indicated here, it is said here that in my error, elastic section modulus was not entered for member 163 and as well as for the 23 others. So meaning that I forgot to assign the elastic section modulus of those members. So what I would be doing is that I would be closing this and I would be selecting. So click select here. So this one, click select. Then click here at the upper right portion of your screen. So missing properties. So click missing properties. Then let's say missing properties. So what this does is that Staad would select every 
member that does not have any properties in it. So once that, I would be clicking this. So as you can see, we now have, let's say, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 members which does not have any properties. So what I would be doing here is that I would be assigning a property into them. And since they are to be um, horizontal members, I would be assigning our section properties for BIMS, which is our 450, I mean 400 by 250 mm, which is to be this. So I would be clicking assign. Then, okay, so there. So let's check once again if our model have errors. So click run analysis, then save. So as you can see, we do we now have no errors. We have zero errors, but we have one warning right here. So I would be opening our output file once again to check what what is that warning. So just click in this warning tab right here. Then, okay. So wait, why is our warning not showing? So there, I would be double clicking on the warning tab right here. So this is to be the warning. So take note, guys, that um, if you are to use reference loads in your seismic loads analysis, which is UBC 1997, you must perform an analysis command followed by a change command for every seismic load case that you will perform. So it is indicated here. So what that does is that it will reset the matrix for every time you will run your seismic load case. So this is pretty much straightforward. So once again, we have defined our reference loads before in this part right here. So we have our reference load files here at the right part of your screen. So I will just be moving this a bit. So these are to be our reference load, which we used for our seismic load definition, which is UBC 1997. So once again, what I would be doing is that I would be going to the command file. So this is to be the command file. And I will be searching for the UBC um, case details or the seismic load case details. And it is to be this ones right here. So I would just be writing on them. So basically, oops, sorry. So it would be this ones right here. So this are, I mean, this is for my earthquake along the positive x-axis, earthquake along the negative x-axis, earthquake along the positive z-axis, and the earthquake along the negative z-axis. So I would be pressing enter here for me to have a new line. Then I would type perform analysis. Then change. So once again, what this does is that it will reset the matrix for every time that we will be applying our seismic load case details right here using our reference load. So yun, ulitin ko lang, gagawin ko siya sa lahat ng ating earthquake among all directions. So negative x, positive x, and whatsoever. So there, and now that we have already assigned this, so I would be closing this. So I would be closing our command editor, but of course, I will be saving it. Okay, and we will be running the analysis once again. So run analysis. So as you can see, guys, we now have zero errors and zero warnings. And we have 10 notes, but don't mind these 10 notes right here. These are just notes. So it does not really um, affect our analysis file. So if I would be going to the output file, which is to be this, and if I would be scrolling down, so we can actually check for the floor diaphragms here. So it is said here in the floor diaphragms command that we have defined, I think, three weeks ago or four weeks ago. These are to be the center of mass for every flooring. I mean, for every story. So it is indicated here that for our first floor, the center of mass is to be located at 6.171, 3.988. So this is to be its x-coordinate and this is to be its y-coordinate. So meaning if that this is to be our center of mass, it means that our base shear is to be located at these locations right here per floor. So there. And for example, that the center of rigidity of our building is not to be located here, we would be having our natural torsion moment 
which we included in our analysis before in this part if you can remember so if you can remember before this is to be it so we have applied a multiplying factor for natural torsional moment and accidental torsion moment so those are just to be it so if you want to check the results i mean let's say the um the supporting reactions the support reactions and let's say you want to check the deflection the shear moment diagram of every member what you would be doing is that you would be going to the post processing tab so i would just be removing the pdf file in on top of me and there and as you can see guys at this part this is to be post processing so go to post processing then click apply then okay then this is for the displacements this is for the reactions this is for the beam results plate results and whatsoever so for our reactions for example so suppose that you want to know the reactions at this node right here or this footing right here so what i would be doing is that i would be clicking it and this is to be its reactions so as you can see for its fy for dead load but i'm not quite sure if you can see because it is very small but anyway so suppose that you want to check the vertical component of the reaction at this footing it is located here so for dead loads it is 163.86 kilonewtons for live loads that is to be 25.205 kilonewtons and whatsoever but take note guys that all of these are just in basic load case details so we have not yet applied our load combinations so speaking about load combinations it is better i think if we would be defining them first but confirmation first. Guys, are you still following? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Yes, okay, so there and once again, what we would be doing is that we would be applying load combination. So after applying loads onto your structures, the next thing that we will be doing here is that we will be defining our load combinations and our reference for the load combinations that we will be defining here is to be the National Structural Code of the Philippines, which is basically on top of me. So that is a snip, I mean a snapshot of the National Structural Code of the Philippines. So defining our load combinations will be as easy as pointing, clicking, typing, and a little bit of remembering because basically that is to be what we will be doing. So for us to apply, I mean for us to define our load combination, just click here at this tab right here. So loadings, then click on your load case details right here, then click add. So this interface would come out. So for us to define our combination, so we, we actually have two ways. So the first way is to be this one right here. So this is to be defined combination. And this is fairly straightforward. So what we will be doing here is that we will be um, putting here the load case details at this part right here on your right. And we will be applying the factors. So wait, I will just be writing on it for a while, guys. Okay, so there and if you can see at the upper right, I mean upper left corner of your screens, that is to be the load combination. So let's, I think that it is better if we would be defining the LRFD first or the factored loads. So if you can see here, this is to be 1.4 times dead load. So for pretend that I want that, I mean, I want to define that parameter, which is 1.4 dead load. What I would be doing is that I would be clicking dead load here and I would be clicking this button for it to be included at the right side of our interface. And we will be applying our factors here, which is 1.4. So once again, I am defining 1.4 dead load. So 1.4 dead load. So I am defining this load case right here. So with such... So I would be naming it. So let's say I want it to be named as 1.4 dead load. And for the load number, let's say I want this to be starting at load number 101 for it to be segregated with our basic load cases. Because if you can see at, I mean on your right, our load cases here are as follows. So for our basic load cases, those are to be 1 up until 10. 
and I want my load combination to start at 100 one for it to be segregated from this um, load combinations. But this is optional. This is just for um, or for an organized work, I should say. So once again, once that I will be doing that, I will be clicking add. So from that, guys, I, I now have a load case. I mean, a load combination right here which says 1.4 dead load okay so let's add another one so let's say that i will be defining um 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load plus 0.5 roof live load so i would be going to the define combinations once again then let's say two i mean 102 so let's say 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load so what i would be doing is that i would be clicking dead load live load then I would be putting them here. Then I would be applying 1.2 as a factor for our dead load and 1.6 as a factor for our live load. So once that I would be clicking add, it is already here. Okay, so we have a catch here. So if you can see at the left part of your screen, so these are to be our basic load combinations for LRFD, there is this parameter which is this or the 1.2 dead load plus 1 earthquake load plus live load but once again we have a catch since in our um in our load case details here we have four cases of earthquake loads so basically if you would be i mean assigning our dead loads like this like what we have been doing a while ago you must define it four times since we have four load cases for earthquakes which are to be these ones right here so apat na beses mo siyang uulit ulitin hanggang makompleto mo yung positive x axis up until the negative z axis and for us to save some time what we would be doing is that we would be making use of the auto load combination so this is to be the second way on how we would be applying load combinations onto our structure so what we would be doing here is that we would be selecting the um, the code here so let's say that you want your code to be ASC 7-10 and you want it to be an allowable stress design or ASD so generate generate loads and this would come out but the thing is we do not have NSCPs here as for this moment as for the latest update so what we would be doing is that we would be making one so let's go to um, custom loads um, I'm sorry I, I think it is better if we would if we would be closing this first then let's go to automatic combinations right here at the top so automatic combinations then edit auto, auto combination rules so i would be clicking this and this interface would come out so for a while okay so here we go so what you would be doing so suppose that you want to define a table for nscp so what you would be doing is that you would be going to the custom code so as you can see i have this custom code right here and after clicking custom code click on add add table so once that you would be clicking add table you can now define your um, load combination so for example you want this to be 1.4 dead load so under the dead column just press i mean just type 1.4 then press enter so from that guys i already have one load combination so just click on this append row for us to add a new a load combinations and there just do that as lo i mean until you are satisfied with your load combination so there and spoiler alert i have already made my load combinations right here so this is for lrfd and this is for the service live load or this is for asd so i have already pre-made them for us not to waste time so there and i have made it i mean i I have named it as 2015, NSCP 2015 LRFD and NSC, NSCP 2015 Service. So I will just be closing this. And there. And for me to apply them here, so I would just be deleting these load cases right here first. So I would be clicking Add. I'm sorry. Add, then Auto Load Combination, then go to um, Custom Code then click on the load case that you want or the load combination category that you want and i want this to be lrfd and i would be um, i mean i would be starting the combination number from 101 so i would be generating the loads and i would be applying it 
So as you can see, we have plenty of um, load combinations here in LRFD. So let's say that I want to apply the load combinations for service loads or for service, I mean for ASD. Just click on this. Then as for the starting combination number, I would be uh, typing 201 for it to be segregated from the LRFD. So 201 tayo mag-start ngayon para hindi nakakalito. So I would be generating the loads. Then click add. So there. So now that we have our 100 series, which are to be this. So these are to be the 100 series and those are to be for LRFD. And for our 200 series, these are for our ASD or our serviceability um, combinations. Okay, so those are to be your load combinations. And load combination is, as the name states, are the combination of loads. What about for load envelopes? So your load envelope are to be the collection of load cases. And I mean, may it be a basic load case. Let's say a uh, load combination, as long as it is to be a load case, you can actually collect them into a, let's say, an envelope. So suppose that we would be having this envelope right here. So let's say that we have this envelope and we would be having another envelope right here and let's say that i would be naming our envelope right here as envelope 1000 just for pretend and let's say that i would be naming this as envelope 2000 so alam niyo yung envelope guys yung well yung inalagay sa mailbox yung binibigay sa mga Christ, sa mga catholic schools kapag merong mission month so yun yung envelope natin so the use of your envelope is for the collection of your load case, cases so for example that you want to define this load 1000 right here to be used for LRFD design and let, let's say this is for serviceability or ASD so what you will be doing here is that you will be um, putting this load case this details right here so for LRFD, so let's say that this load case is right here. I will be including them here. And as for our 200 series or our, for our ASD, I will be including them here in this load envelope. So that is basically what it does. So using load envelopes in structural designing or structural engineering is indeed optional, but it will make your computation much more organized. So let's just define our load combinations. So for our load combinations, just click at this lower part right here, then click add. Then for our load envelope, let's say I want this to be 1000, which we have defined earlier. And for our 1000 series, I want this to be for our LRFD. So for the type, this is to be strength since we are using LRFD here and you will, you will be choosing all LRFD load combinations here. So I would be selecting every 100 series and I will be placing them to the right, then click add. And as for the other, let's say this is to be the 2000 series and let's say that the 2000 series is to be for your ASD or for your serviceability. So I would be clicking um, serviceability here and I will be selecting the 200 series that I have uh, defined earlier. So here and click add. So what that does is that I have grouped my load combinations into two envelopes for me to um, have a much more organized solution. So confirmation first, everyone. Are you still following? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So itong nasa upper left natin, I mean nasa taas ko, those are to be the reference that I have defined in my load combination. So let us make use of our load envelopes. So let's say that I want to analyze, I mean, I want to check if in my program, the model, I mean, the model that we have modeled before passes the story drift check. So what I would be doing is that I would be going to the post analysis command here. So post analysis command, then I will be clicking define command right here at, at the lower right portion of your screen. So define command, then here. So this is to be for story drift. So now Staad will ask you what is to be the allowable story drift factor. So I think it is better for us to solve for it first. So from that, guys, you must check this one right here. So looking at the left portion of your screen. So this is a page 
2-211 of the National Structural Code of the Philippines. And you can solve for the maximum story drift rate here. Pero, bago ang lahat, alam nyo ba kung ano ang story drift, guys? Do you know what story drift is? Okay, so suppose that this is to be the side view of your building. And let's say that I would be drawing, um, I mean, I would be applying earthquake loads onto this. Magde-deform ngayon yung ating building in this manner. So it would be deforming this way. And this is to be the story drift. I'm sorry. So this is to be for the story drift for the last floor. And this is to be the story drift for the um, third floor. And this is to be the story drift for the second floor. So it would depend upon the story. So yun lang naman yung ating um, tag dito, um, story drift. So for us to solve for it, so it is to be given by this equation at the upper left corner of, of your screen or delta M. So I would just be writing them in our screen right here. So delta M. I'm sorry. Is equal to 0. R. I mean 0. 0.7. I'm sorry. So 0. 0.7 R times delta S. And this delta S right here is to be your story drift. So this is to be your story drift. And as for this delta M, this is actually given. And if I am um, to scroll down here, so it is said here that your delta M, so looking at the line to your left, so your delta M shall not exceed 0 0.025 times the story height if the period is less than 0 0.7 seconds and it shall be, I mean, the calculated story drift shall not exceed 0 0.02 times the story height if the fundamental period is to be 0 0.7 seconds. So with that, guys, if, if let's say our period or our period T is to be less than 0 0.7 seconds, meaning that our delta M is to be equal to 0 0.025 times the height times H. But if it is greater, I mean, if it is e greater than or equal to 0 0.7 seconds, it means that our delta M is to be equal to 0 0.02 times height. So these are to be the ones that we will be checking. But how can we check for the period? So we can either compute for it manually, but since we have already analyzed this one right here a while ago, so let's just analyze it once again. It is already indicated here, the period. So let's just wait for a while. So if we would be going here. So utilities, then analysis output. So dito makikita nyo ngayon yung ating mga base shear. I mean base shear, period I should say. So scroll down up until you go, I mean up until you find this. So this is to be for your seismic loads. So it is indicated here that the computed period is to be 0 0.035. So as per in this one right here. So 0. Point, I mean 0 0.435 I should say. So if that is to be 0 0.435, so 0 0.435, it is indeed less than 0 0.7 seconds. So meaning that we will be making use of this. So ito yung gagamitin nating formula ngayon. So from that, I will just be erasing them first here. So let's solve for the story drift. So our delta M is to be equal to zero. Hi, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. I'll just disturb you for a while. But anyway, sure, you can continue your discussion later. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll just be leaving the class for now. And thank you for having me inside or okay. having me in your class. Okay, ma'am. Thank you also, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Take care, ma'am. Okay, so anyway, guys, where was I? Teka lang, no? So this is me breaking out of character. Taglish tayo onte. So, so for delta M, so as I have indicated earlier, kapag delta M daw, looking at the left corner, I mean, the left part of your screens, your delta M is to be 0 0.02 oops na doble doble yung 0 0 0.025 times h and this is if your period is to be less than 
0.7 seconds, which it is. So, 0 0.025 times h, and this is to be equal to 0 0.7 times r. And can someone tell me ano yung value ng r kapag uh, reinforced, I mean, special moment reinforced concrete? What is to be the value of r? So, we have already defined the merger. Very good. So, according to Mr. Parel, it is 8.5. So, tama si Mr. Parel. So, that is to be 8.5 times delta s. So, for us to solve for delta s, let's just divide both sides of the equation by 0.7 and 8.5. Or kapag elementary kayo, cross multiply. So, delta s, delta s, and this is now to be equal to 0 0.025 times h divided by 0 0.7 times 8.5. So our delta S right now is to be equal to, so looking at the calculator, kasi yung calculator natin. So looking, oops, sorry. Nagkamil ng pindot. So looking at the calculator at the middle of your screen. So this is to be 0 0.025 divided by 0.7 divided by 8.5 so our answer here is to be 0 0.0042 times h so 0 0.0042 times h so ito yung gagamitin nating factor for us to check the story drift kung pasado ba yung ating model if there is to be an earthquake subjecting to it. Kasi ito daw dapat yung maximum na story drift. Okay, so 0 0.0042. Close ko lang muna yung ating calculator. And then, let's go to the analysis and design, then post analysis. So ito yung kanina. Then define commands here. Then, punta tayo sa story drift. So there. But, I almost forgot, before applying your story drifts, kailangan muna guys na maglagay tayo ng load list. So, ano ba yung load list na yan? So, if you would be going to, he, I mean, to this part, load list. So, click load list. So, what this interface does is that, ayun, kung ano yung linagay mo ngayon na load list, ko, or kung ano yung mga linagay mong load, yun yung gagamitin na computation para doon sa ating next na command. And if our next command is to be, let's say, um, for story drift checking, so kapag story drift, dapat serviceability load yung gagamitin natin. So from that, guys, we would be choosing the ASD here or the serviceability load combinations at this part. Kasi ito yung gagamitin natin ngayon to check for the story drift. But if you can remember, we have actually um, applied load envelopes here. So, ito yung load envelopes natin kanina. And for the 2000 series, this is for the serviceability. So, ito na lang gamitin natin. But take note guys that this is basically uh, the same as if you would be um, selecting this one by one, yung 200 series natin. So, press lang sila. It is just that if you would be doing it this way, your um, solution will now be much more organized. So, I will be doing it that way. So, click OK. Then yes. So as you can see at this part, meron na tayong load list. Eh, meron na ba? Naglagay ba ako ng envelope kanina? So, 2,000 envelope. Anyway, so ayan. And then the next thing that you will be doing is that you will be clicking here. Post analysis command. Then define commands. Then ilagay natin dito sa story drift. And we will be applying 0 0.0042 here. Point, point 0.0042. So, ito yung nasolve natin kanina. Which is to be this. So, ito. Ito yung nasolve natin kanina. Point 0 0.0042 times height. So, I would be adding this. So, from that, guys, check natin. Run analysis natin. Kala, erase ko muna pala yung buong screen. So, I would be running the analysis. So, I would be viewing the output file and I would be scrolling down up to this point. So, hindi siya nag-run. It is because that hindi niya nakita yung ating load list. 
So what I would be doing is that, teka, baguhin natin ngayon yung load list natin. So I will be clicking load list. Yan, di ko alam kung bakit pero walang nagpapakita dito sa portion na to. So what I would be doing is that I would be deleting that. I would be deleting this once again. And I would be re-entering our load list. So I would be selecting envelope, 2000 envelope, then press OK. So now that I have my envelope right here, ulitin natin. Doon na naman tayo sa post analysis commands. Define commands, then story drift, then point zero zero four two. So once again, guys, this factor right here was solved for a while ago. So click add. Then, ayun, I think okay naman na to. So I would be running the analysis once again. Then let's check the output file. So click natin dito sa left part. Teka, alisin ko na nga lang itong PDF muna natin ngayon. So at this left part right here, you can actually go straight to the story drift. So double click on the story drift. So these are to be the story drifts. So on the first floor, so, so, so sa first floor natin, wala daw siyang drifts. That is because that is, well, basically the first floor. Actually, this is not the first floor. This is the foundation level, I should say. So this is to be the height. So of course, hindi naman yan magde-deflect sa foundation level. And if we would be going to the fourth floor, so this is to be the fourth floor. These are to be the respective story drifts. So these are to be the story drifts. And STAAD would automatically say if it will be passing or it would be failing. Considering the um, factor that we have applied earlier, which is yung 0 0.0042. So as per this, so as per the story drift, pasado yung ating, um, tawag dito, ang ating model. So there, so kung pasado na yan, I think it is better for us to go straight to the designing proper itself. So I would be closing this. So mag-design na agad tayo. But teka, pwede pala tayo guys na pumunta sa post-processing part, which is at this part. And we can also um, define the envelope or we can use the envelope that we used. So for example, gusto mo makita yung results dun sa LRFD or yung load combinations natin that is to be envelope 1000 then press apply then press ok then punta tayo ngayon sa reactions then let's just click Teka, punta natin sa isometric view so let's just click here so for the first load combination the FY here or the vertical reaction of that footing is to be 229.404 so, yun siya. And if you want to check for this, ganun din. Click mo yan. Then, its vertical reaction would be 241.458 and whatsoever. And for example that, you want to check the shear moment, um, I mean the shear moment diagrams of each of the beams, pwede pa rin naman yun. So, go to the beam results here. Then, just double-click on the beam that you want to view. So, example, gusto natin makita tong beam na to. So, just double-click on it. Then, go to shear and bending. So, basically, guys, this is to be the bending moment if our load case is to be for earthquakes. But, for example, I want to view um, 1.4 dead load. So, just click this one right here, 1.4 dead load. So, basically, guys, this is to be its moment diagram. So if you want to exact, I mean, if you want to find the exact measurement, or I mean the exact exact magnitude of a certain moment at a certain location. So for example, gusto mong malaman from, I mean, one meter from node 49. So just type one here or at this portion right here. So dito, pwede nating iba-ibahin yan. So one meter. And as you can see, the shear there is to be 19.063. And the moment there is to be negative 6.635 kilonewton meter so there so are you guys following nakasunod pa guys or suko na and very good how about for the others okay pa okay very good sige edi Kapag di pa nakasunod yung iba, panoorin nyo ngayon yung ating recorded video lecture. Okay, so that is for the shear moment diagrams, the properties, the loadings, and the geometry. Okay, and as for the displacement, ganun din pala. So click here, then click on the node that you want 
to check the displacement. Tama ba yung grammar ko? Anyway, parang ganun na din yun. So, click on the node. So, I want to check for this node right here. Double click. Then, displacements. Ito na pala yung displacements niya, guys, at this portion right here. So, for uh, load combination 1.4 dead load, it's um, node displacement would be as follows. Pero punta tayo sa may earthquake. So, as for this earthquake, so 108, its displacement is to be 32.948. Ay, teka, hindi pala dapat kinoconsider to since this is for LRFD. If you are to check for the displacement, make sure that those are unfactored loads. So, hindi mo dapat sinecheck yung, um, tawag dito, yung displacement kapag factored load. So, dapat na doon ka sa serviceability loads. And those are to be, um, let's say, envelope number 200. Pero hindi natin na-define dito kanina. So, ayun lang naman yun. But let's go back to the analytical model. So, as you can see, our... Structure is now um, adequate from story drift check. So, sa story drift, pwede na siya. So, I think it is better for us to design the concrete frame already. Ay, teka, before anything else, check pala muna natin, guys, yung center of rigidity. So, let's go to post analysis command right here. Then, define commands. Then, center of rigidity or CG. So, CG, add natin yan ngayon. So, this is for... Cent ay hindi pala ito pala yung center of rigidity yung di yung, dia yung diaphragm di dia cr so this is for center of rigidity then click add then there and let's run the analysis once again okay so let's view the output file and just double click at this portion or ito yung center of rigidity natin so basically these are to be the centers of rigidity for every floor level. So it is to be located at 6.022 and 3.96 respectively for the fourth floor. And if you would be going to the floor diaphragm, ito yung sa fourth floor yung center of mass natin, which is 5.963 and 3.912. So meaning that they are not concurrent. So ibig sabihin yung location natin ng diaphragm, I mean, location natin ng center of rigidity is not the same with the location of the center of mass. So, meaning, meron tayong lever arm. So, for example, if you would be going to the top view. So, ito rough estimate na lang to guys kasi hindi ko naman na-check. So, for example, na yung center of mass daw natin is to be located here. And let's say that our center of rigidity is to be located here just for an example. So as you can see, they are not concurrent. So we have a lever arm there. And let's say that our earthquake is to be located here. So ito kunwari yung earthquake natin. And, eh, teka mali. Dito pala dapat sa kabila. So this is to be our earthquake. If this is to be our center of mass. So ito yung center of mass natin. And ito din yung center of rigidity. So as you can see, we have a lever arm here. So may lever arm tayo ngayon. And this... Um, right here. So, let's say that this is to be D and this is to be F. So, F times D is to be equal to our natural torsion moment. Pero, kahit wag nyo nang isolve yan kasi isosolve na yan automatically ni Staad. If and only if at this portion right here, so sa load case natin, kung kinonsider nyo to guys, itong um, natural torsion moment. So, kapag linagay nyo yan na 1, Staad would automatically solve for the natural torsional moment. Regardless if i-define mo yung rigidity or yung load mass. So, si Staad na mismo yung mag-solve niyan. So, kamusta guys? Okay pa? Are you good? Okay pa ba guys? Nakasunod pa? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Umukhang si Mr. Parel pati si Miss Cruz na lang yung... Ay, si Miss... Uh, Audrey na lang yung nakakasunod. How about for the others? Nakakasunod pa? Yep, sir. Ayan, very okay, good. Nice. Sige, so let's go to the design part itself, no? So for the design part, since okay naman na tayo sa ating mga drift checks and whatnot, let's go to the design tab right here. So design. Then we will be going to concrete. Kasi concrete nga itong dinidesign natin. So, concrete. But by the way, guys, we have two ways on how we would be designing our reinforced concrete structure. So, the first way is by, of course, using Staad Pro. 
So, ito yung gagawin natin ngayon. So, sta add pro. And the other being RCDC. But this RCDC right here is to be a separate software. Pero, gagamitin din niya yung analysis mo ng sta add pro. So, there. But for our lesson for today, we would be making use of sta add pro as our design. So, yan. So, dito pala. So, sta add pro. Okay. Anyway. So, let's just design it that way. So, kapag nasa concrete na, this interface on the right would come out. And, ayun. So, ACI 3018, I mean, 318, 2014. So, this is to be the latest ACI. But, disclaimer guys, if you are to design concrete structures here, you should use 318, 2011. So, bakit? It is because that in Staad, hindi pa nila na-update na itong 2014. And minsan, kapag ginamit nyo itong 2014, minsan naging erroneous yung sagot nyo. So, let's just let's just wait up until Staad would update ACI 318-2014. But for now, let's just use ACI 30, I mean 3.18.2011. So, eto, dapat yung gamitin natin muna ngayon. Okay, so once that this code is already selected, we would now be defining the parameters. Oops, by the way, nakalimutan ko na naman. If we are to design this in USD, so yung ginagamit nyo kay Sir Segundo dati, yung 0.85 FC prime AB, or yung... Uh, LRFD or USD or the ultimate strength design or the ultimate stress design, we must first um, define the load list first. First, first. Okay. So, click load list. Then, piliin mo ngayon yung mga load combinations for um, LRFD or for USD. And if you can remember earlier, I have defined them in envelope 1000. So, ayun. And kung ayun yung gamitin envelope nyo, Go back here and piliin nyo lahat ng naka-100 series. So, yung 1.4 dead load up until here. So, eto. So, disclaimer first everyone. In this procedure, hindi ko na kinonsider yung vertical effect ng earthquake, no? So, yung horizontal effect lang yung kinonsider ko. Okay. So, there. And gamit na lang ako ng envelope para hindi sayang yung pag-define ko kanina ng envelope. So, I would be clicking this. I would be putting them here and I would be Clicking OK. Okay, but nag-define ba siya? Okay, so nag-define na siya. And, ayun, let's define the parameters. So, ito yung sa ACI 318-2011 natin. So, ito, hindi ko kasi mapalakihan to para makita nyo sana. So, it is to be for your um, reading assignment kung ano tong mga tag-iisang to. So, if you want to check this, this is to be the stiffness reduction factor as well as this. And itong CLB natin is to be the clear cover for the outermost bottom reinforced concrete. I mean, I mean plate element. So, ito yung concrete cover natin. So, let's define it as 40 mm. So, 0 0.04 meters. So, click add. So, as well as for this, 0 0.04. So, this is for the side reinforcements. So, ito guys, concrete cover lang to. Then CLT, so this is the concrete cover on top, 0 0.04, add. Then for the depth, ito, wag mo nang lagyan to, kasi meron naman tayong YD. And as for this E-phase, so wala na yan. So as for our FC prime, so let's say that I want to define my compressive strength to be 20,700 kilonewtons per square meter, or kilopascal or 20.7 megapascal so yan 2700 click natin yung add then this is to be the yield stress for our i mean yield strength for our main reinforcement steel so let's say ang gusto natin nga is to be 415000 for 415 megapascal then click add then for our secondary steel so this is for your stirrups for your lateral ties basta yung secondary natin I want it to be 276,000 or yung 276 megapascal natin. So, click add. So, bear with me guys. Malapit na tayong matapos. So, FY secondary. So, dito din. Tatanawin ka din niya kung ano yung gusto mong size ng maximum mo. And since we are in metric units, so I want this to be, let's say, 25 mm. So, type 25 mm. Click add. As well as for minimum main. So, 
Siguro ang gusto kong minimum dito ay 16mm. Click Add. Then for the minimum secondary, so let's say I want this to be 8mm. Click Add. So what else do we need here? So ito sa reinforcement. So we must select if it is either tied or spiral columns. So this columns right here are tied. So alam nyo naman guys yung pinagkaiba ng tied pati spiral, no? That's perfect. Okay, very good. So how about for the others? So Miss Angeles, alam mo yung pagkakaiba ng tied pati spiral? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. How about for oh, Mr. Andres? Oh, okay. Alam. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So, yan. And I want this to be a tied one. So, click add. Then, ayun. And this is to be for the minimum reinforcement percentage for our columns. And by standard, guys, yung minimum natin na ratio is to be 1%. So, I would be clicking 0 0.01 there. So, click Add. So, ano pa ba? So, ito pala. Kailangan natin i-track. So, ito. Kayo na bahala dito. No? It would depend up to you. It would be depending to you, I should say, if what tracking parameter you want. So, for tracking parameter 1, so, it would be the beam design, intermediate level detail. And, dito naman sa yung number 2 natin, Parang i-design niya for every 1 over 12 of the section. Pero gusto ko na lang itong 1. So, pag-experimentahan nyo na lang kung anong pinagkakaiba nila. So, I would be clicking add. So, what else? So, siguro yun lang muna yung i-define ko. So, I would be closing this. And go to commands here. So, commands. Then, design beam. So, I would be adding this. And, design column. So, add ko din yan. So, now that all of these are already defined. The next thing that we will be doing here is that we will be assigning them to this model. So as for your concrete covers, so itong tatlong concrete covers na to, applicable to sa lahat. So I would be assigning them to view. So assign to view, assign to view, and assign to view. And as for our FC prime, so assign to view ko na din yan. And as for our FY main, and our FY secondary, so it is to be applicable to every member right here. So, ganun na din yung sa max main natin, as well for our minimum main, and for our minimum secondary. And as for this, so select if it is either tied or spiral column, so this are to be just for columns. So, select natin, so I would be clicking select, then... Um, let's say, parallel to Y. So, kanya-kanya yung technique. Pwede nyo naman i-pindutin or i-click one by one. Pero to shortcut naman na to. So, I would be assigning this. As well as for our row minimum of 0 0.01 for columns. So, there. And I would be um, assigning this one for the design columns. So, design column. Then, select ulit ako. Then, inverse. So, eto. So, ulitin ko lang kanya-kanyang technique kung paano i-select. So, pwede din siguro punta kaya sa front view and select it this way. So, you can do this right here. So, yan. Na-select na siya. And I would be assigning design beam here. So, design beam. Then, as for track, I would be assigning it to view. Okay. So, after which, so kung sa tingin nyo okay na kayo, pwede nyo na bang i-run na lang yung analysis. Pero kailangan nyo muna palang i-close to. So, close nyo muna to. Then, run analysis. Okay, so, yun pala yung pagkakamali kanina. Dapat, kapag mag-start kayo ng concrete design dito, dapat naka-close yung mga, um, yung command file, yung analysis output. So, all of them should be closed. Teka, check lang natin yung command file natin. Okay, so mukhang okay naman. So, i-run ulit natin analysis. Let's check for the output file. So, for the concrete design. So, these are to be the concrete designs. So, eto. Sinabi niya dito, pero ang gulo ng interface dito, no? So, kapag gusto nyo nang mas maayos, you should use RCDC. 
Pero as per our module, dito lang tayo magdi-design eh. So if you would be scrolling down, so let's say this is to be for your beam number 17. Ito yung design result niya. And ito daw yung rebar niya. So as you can see here, ito sa top bar niya meron tayong dalawang 20mm. Sa bottom bars meron tayong tatlong 16mm. And the like. So ngayon, i-check nyo siya isa-isa ngayon. Then i-summarize nyo siya manually for the plan itself. So, scroll down natin hanggang mapunta tayo sa column. So, as for the columns, ito siya. Pero hindi niya pinapakita yung drawing na no? pinapakita lang dito. So, for example, that for column, anong column ka? Okay, so, di, ito pala. Ay, hindi. Ito pala, column for column 84. This is to be its bar configuration. So, dapat meron kayong 8 na 16mm. So, that is to be the one that you will be using. So, for column 85, once again, you would be using 8, 6, I mean 8 pieces, 16mm. And, ayun. So, basically, guys, that's how you would be designing it. So, madali lang naman yung pag-input. Minsan, kapag ito yung gamitin natin, ang mahirap lang is yung pag-summarize. So, there. So far, are there any questions? About anything under the sun. Okay, so mukhang wala. So ano pa bang ituturo natin for this afternoon? So that is basically it guys. So ayun, and if you would be going here, pwede nyo palang i-control ano, I F. So control F, then type nyo fail kunwari para check natin kung may nag-fail. So as you can see, zero matches. So meaning walang nag-fail. Kasi nung sinerge ko dito, wala namang sinabing may nag-fail na um, member. Or let's see, lagay natin provide. And it, biro lang. Okay, so, yun lang yun guys. And, sa mga nagtatanong kung paano ulit makuha yung mga reactions, balik tayo dun, no? So, post-processing ulit. Then, as per this, so, piliin nyo lang kung ano yung gusto nyo makitaan. So, for example, gusto nyo makita lang, dead load lang. Ilagay mo yung dead load dyan, then press apply, then okay. Then, go to the reactions. So, I think, you would be using this in your foundation engineering. So just click on the node or on the footing itself. So click here and voila. So this is to be its vertical reaction for dead load. So this is for the vertical reaction for dead load for node 16 or for footing 16 and etc. So basically guys, ganun lang yun. So that pretty much sums up our discussion for today. So before ending our class, do you have any questions? Okay, so if there are no more questions, i-end ko na muna yung recording guys. So I would be ending the recording.